student fires a cannonball vertically upwards with a speed of 23 meters per second. Determine all unknowns and answer the following questions. Neglect drag and the initial height and horizontal motion of the cannonball. So in the positive physics method, we're going to go ahead and list the initial speed, the average speed, the final speed, distance, time, and acceleration. So I prefer to think of this as two separate problems. So I'm actually going to cross out the second half of the problem and say that for right now my final time is when the ball reaches the maximum height. Alright, so now it's time to start looking for three givens. So the first given is in the problem the cannonball was fired with a speed of 23 meters per second. That's at the very start of my problem, so that's my initial speed of 23 meters per second. By eliminating the second half of the problem, I know that when the ball reaches maximum height, the ball's final speed is going to be zero. Also, since this ball is in midair, and we can say that drag is negligible, we can say that the object is in free fall, the cannonball is in free fall, so the cannonball has an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared, and again, that's an automatic when the object is in free fall. Alright, so looking at this, I know I can go ahead and figure out my time using the definition of acceleration. So if I do my final speed minus my initial speed and divide that by the acceleration, take the absolute value, that will give me a time of 23 minus 0 is 23 divided by 10 or 2.3 seconds. Next I'm going to find the average speed. So the average speed will be halfway between the initial speed and the final speed. So that would be my, in this case, just initial speed divided by 2 which gives me 11.5 meters per second. And finally I can calculate my distance by doing average speed times the time, which gives me 11.5 times 2.3, or 26.45 meters. All right, so it says, how long did the cannonball rise? Well, since I cut this problem in half, this 2.3 seconds was how long the cannonball took to reach the maximum height. So 2.3 seconds would be the rise time. The cannonball's maximum height, well height is distance, and so that would give me 26.45 meters. I can always keep more than three sig figs, I could have rounded that to 26.5 as well. And lastly, the total flight time. If the cannonball took 2.3 seconds to rise, then the cannonball is going to take an additional 2.3 seconds to come back down, giving me a total of 2.3 times 2, or 4.6 seconds, as my total flight time. Let's take a look at one more. So in this one, it says a student fires a cannonball vertically upwards. The cannonball returns to the ground after a 3.80 second flight. Determine all unknowns and answer the following questions. All right, neglect drag and the initial height and horizontal motion of the cannonball. All right, so I'm going to start, as I always do, by writing initial speed, average speed, final speed, distance, time, and acceleration. And again, I'm going to cross out the second half of the problem and rename my final time as when the ball reaches the maximum height. All right. So in the problem, it says 3.80 seconds, but we need to be careful. That's how long it took the cannonball to go up and come back down. So that would be my time right here. And remember, I scratched out the second part of the problem. So I need to divide this by 2 to find the real time I'm looking at, which is 1.9 seconds, which would be my cannonball's rise time. And that, since I crossed out the second half of the problem, that's going to be the time that I'm going to use in my calculations. I also know that the object is in the cannonball is in free fall, so 10 meters per second squared. Remember, your class might be using 9.81, and my final speed is zero because I'm saying that my final time is when the ball reached the maximum height. 
so now I have three givens so I can start to solve so I have acceleration and time so I can use that to find the initial speed since the final speed is zero the initial speed will just equal the acceleration times the time and that gives me 19 meters per second since I have two of the three times I can just do the initial speed divided by two to find the average since the final speed was zero and get 9.5 meters per second now the distance I'll do the average speed times the time and that gives me a distance of 9.5 times 1.9 seconds or 18.05 meters Oops, so that the initial speed was my 19 meters per second and the maximum height was 18.05 meters so again remember my trick with these problems is I can make them just a one direction problem by crossing out the second half of the problem but when I do that always be really careful about making sure you're using the right time